Hey, this is Mira Beck, the founder of Overnight Success Publishing and host of Wake Up and Be Successful show. And on today's episodes, I'm sitting down with Kevin Rogers, the uh, founder of Copy Chief and host of several podcasts, but I'm just gonna let him introduce himself. But stay tuned, on this show, we're gonna cover copywriting and really messaging and the way you need to communicate with your clients uh, along with uh, Kevin's story. So Kevin, welcome to the show. Kevin, Thanks, welcome Mira. to the studio. Thanks appreciate for having it, me. Brother. It's great to be here. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. I know how super busy you are lately. So uh, it's awesome. So just introduce yourself to our viewers and sure. uh, give them kind of the background on Yeah. Here. Yeah. My name is Kevin Rogers and uh, I was a stand-up comedian in my 20s. It's a great way to spend uh -huh. your, your young formative years. Yeah. Well, I saw your piece of your stand-up just a few minutes ago and it was it was awesome so Thanks. I think you're still in it right I am back uh, in it yeah I was away been. for 12 years wow. and a friend of mine um, kind of brought me back into it sort of challenged me to open mm -hmm. for him and it was too cool to pass up so I'm, awesome. I'm sort of back in it which is which is weird yeah but in my 20s I spent 10 years uh, as a road comic I worked with guys like uh, my friend Billy Gardell from Mike and Molly, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Rock, uh, Louis C.K., you know, yeah, some, cool. some not household names then who have gone mm -hmm. on to superstardom. Yeah. And it was a great time. And then uh, I uh, found a second life as a direct response sales copywriter. Yeah, so cool. we write the ads that sell the products. Mm -hmm. that, that uh, The way I define copywriting is a piece of um, communication that gets action. Yeah. So whether it's a click, it's an opt-in, it's a su subscription, um, our writing is judged on how it converts yeah. the reader into some kind of action. And uh, did that as a freelancer for 10 years. Okay. And four years ago, I started a community and a training center called Copy Chief. Gotcha. And it's been a dream. That's super cool. So before we dive into the copywriting itself, uh, take me a little bit more back, like way to, way to the beginning. What's your backstory, your upbringing? I just want to kind of set the stage. Uh, on this show, we always kind of share where people come from. So whoever's yeah. watching it can relate to that situation, maybe that yeah. background, and realize that you know, everybody has a story. Everybody right. comes from somewhere. So how was your upbringing? Yeah, that's what I love about this business. Everybody has a different road in, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I was, uh, yeah, you know, I was born in Massachusetts. We moved to Florida when I was... In my formative years, I think mm -hmm. I was nine or ten, and uh, um, my parents were working class and uh, had, a, I would say, a pretty normal childhood. Yeah. And um, but you know, I was I never really entertained going to college. I wasn't academically mm -hmm. driven. I yeah. didn't think uh, a formal uh, way of approaching working life was going to be for me. I actually dropped out of high school Did you? in the eleventh yeah. grade. Yeah. All right. And I was a pretty good student up until then, but I just got very restless. You yeah. know, I started working. I had a great job, Mira, uh, working in the in the supermarket, and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, why can't I do this full time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, why can't I just put oh, stuff on shelves all the time? Yeah. I mean, what, what, the school thing's getting in the way of my <laughs> my minimum wage, and so I uh, That's funny. I ended up working doing that and. You know, I was I was a funny kid. You know, I was I was an awkward teen, as most of us are. And uh, one thing I had a knack for was getting a laugh. You mm -hmm. know, and this is around the time of what we call sort of the, the heyday of stand up comedy in the late eighties, mid eighties. Uh, HBO, you know, cable was mm -hmm. kind of a new thing, yeah. right? And uh, Rodney Dangerfield was putting on these great uh, comedy specials, and we were obsessed with them, me and my friends. And mm -hmm. so I would memorize. Uh, these routines, yeah. and I was the guy at the party who could do do the Sam Kinison thing, right? Do the Jerry yeah. Seinfeld thing, and I was sort of like learning as I went. I would go home and like really ponder, ah, that 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 one thing killed at that first party, but at the second party it didn't. What did mm -hmm. I do different, you know? And um, so then my friends sort of dared me to actually do an open mic night with my own material, yeah. and I did it. And um, it's one of those things that, you know, I always tell people who say, I've always wanted to try stand-up. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, now you have to. Yeah. You're obligated. You could be a comic in you, right? Because yeah. you'll know after that first, you know, might be two minutes, five mm -hmm. minutes, you'll, come, you'll walk off that stage knowing if it's for you or not. Yeah. And so that was it. And then by, by 19, uh, I was 18 when the first time I did it. By 19, I was on the road full-time touring oh, wow. as a comic. Were you uh, introverted, extroverted? How did this whole thing... Yeah. Were you kind of the, the class clown? 
a little person, bit, or, but yeah. I think it was a defense mechanism against oh, gotcha. feeling awkward or just not yeah. knowing how else to get attention, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, uh, I would consider myself an introvert. Like, yeah. uh, I, uh, I think that the, the way to tell is if being around people for an extended period, uh, for an extrovert, that gives you energy. Mm -hmm. For an introvert, it, it drains your energy. I gotcha. And I definitely need a break after being, you know, yeah. on yeah. for an extended period. However... I do love people and I love to entertain and I and I, I can I can sort of own the room. Mm -hmm. I've learned to do that. That's but cool. I'm exhausted afterwards. So sure. I'm a hybrid. Yeah, that's really cool. So you got you went on the road, you did your stand up uh, time and then you mentioned 10 years as a copywriter. Was it for a company or uh, how did yeah. you get into the No, freelance. Thing? Yeah, so I actually discovered it through a friend who explained to me what this was and showed me a sales letter and I thought that's the dumbest ugliest thing I've ever seen like <laughs> nobody would respond to that would they but then he started breaking down the yeah. psychology of it right and the persuasion behind it and that's what got me fascinated so I started reading some books like Cialdini's mm -hmm. uh, Persuasion and um, some different stuff and he turned me on then to uh, Gary Halbert and John yeah. Carlton yeah. and Amazingly, John was John was my first hero in copywriting, and we've been friends now for ten years, which still blows my mind. That's cool. Um, and then, uh, but I learned about it, and I, I didn't know how to get work as mm -hmm. a as a freelance copywriter. Sure. So I actually sat on the knowledge for about a year while I just I didn't know how I thought I would start. But then, through a bizarre cir circumstance, I found out that a, a comedy friend of mine was actually mm -hmm. in copywriting now, a guy named Vin Montello. And he kind of became my first mentor. Okay, that's and cool. And he helped me get my first jobs. And if you're pretty good at it and you put a lot of work into it, once you get gigs, you mm -hmm. kind of never not have gigs after yep. that. There might be dips and spikes, but um, there's a great need for copywriters out sure. there. So, and let me ask you this then. Um, was there a lot of word of mouth? Like you did a great job for some for one person, and then referrals happen that's and exactly stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So that's I mean that's a good key point because sometimes people think they need to do a lot of marketing, advertising, all that stuff to get clients. But in my business, I realize same exact thing. You yeah. do a great job for one person. Right. Somebody else sees it, or that right. other person is asked for a referral, whatever. Right. And then slowly but surely, you yeah. you grow your audiences to the point where you know, you work with repeated clients. And yeah. so I think whatever business, you know, you are in, uh, see if there is a circle of people around you that could be a great referral sources. Yeah. And just also, I think it goes sometimes without saying, but do a great job at what you do. Like if you're in business of whatever it is, yeah. just be really good at it. And, and uh, you know, give your customers great experiences so they are happy to refer you out. I mean, yeah. That's a great point. It's the key is I, I call it like a, you have to set the standard, especially mm -hmm. as a freelancer, right? Mm -hmm. That you can't um, just show up and hope that the company you're working with or the client you're working with has good product uh, project management. You sort of have to really take control of that. And, you know, it, look, if you can come in and be a, a relief valve, a release valve for, for something that's been building up pressure yeah. and make it a dream come true experience for them, they will be happy to refer you and yeah. give you testimonials. Yeah, that's really cool. So let's dive into the whole copywriting. I wanna, I want you to help kind of demystify what copywriting actually okay. is, because I think even for me, I never thought I needed copywriting. I, I, you know, I, I didn't even know what it really meant. You know, so mm -hmm. let's just talk about copywriting, how it applies to uh, the regular entrepreneur, someone who started their own business, and how do you use copywriting? What are the different you know, yeah. things that people maybe know, are aware of, like websites, and you wouldn't think of website, uh, you know, words being a copy, right. you know. So let's just kind of like assume that people have no idea what copywriting okay. is and, and chat a little bit about sure. it. Sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a good distinction. So let's just look at it like um, the way we define copy is, like I said, it's, it's the words that are responsible for getting some action, mm -hmm. uh, having an influence on the reader, helping them feel closer to you as a company, as a product, anything. Every sale should be uh, not only a revenue opportunity, but a relationship opportunity, you know? Yeah. And a good copywriter can help bring life 
to the sales process. Yes, you need to make a good sales argument, and but it's, I don't view it as a combative thing, right? Mm -hmm. That this prospect is out there and the last thing they wanna do is give you money and you have to overcome their resistance and force them to give you money. I think it's yeah. just, you know, if, if you're content to uh, market to the right people, who the best qualified prospects, it's pretty easy to have a conversation with them that's gonna make them feel like, wow, this person really gets me yeah. and and has what I need. So one way to look at it technically is there's content and then there's copy. Mm -hmm. A content writer would provide things like your uh, blog post articles, some of your social media content, um, <clears throat> even some of your trainings and, and those sorts of things. The stuff we use to help uh, give value to our audience yeah. with no obligation beyond that, just engagement, right? Yeah, A copywriter Tate picks up that uh, interest you've uh, created and earned through the content and says, okay, now, now let's talk about doing business together, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the copy um, it could be in the form of email, it could be in the form of a landing page, uh, even on your website, even a, a page that is often overlooked like the About Me page, the yeah, About Us yeah. page is a great opportunity not to go for the hard sell, mm -hmm. but to be persuasive to tell your story in a dynamic yeah. way that leaves people going, wow, I really need to take the next step. Yeah. And I do, I love that you brought it up because I always tell, when they ask me which video is the most important video, one of the one on the very top is your story video, yeah. the, the one you can put on the About Us page and cover all the stuff from the beginning to the end because somebody that went to the same school or is from the same town, like there's so many different points that right. people can relate exactly to you on right. that I think people underestimate the power of their story and yeah. using it in marketing. Well, that's what we look for. Think about how we conduct ourselves in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like we go through life, we don't, we, we get through the formal encounters because that's sort of the obligation. Mm -hmm. But what we live for, what colors our life is the informal, uh, con you know, times with people where we feel close to them. We have something in common. Those are the relationships we look forward to nurturing, yeah. right? So you right, it could be the smallest thing like uh, you, oh, you went to the same school or you're from the mm -hmm. same town or um, you both love dogs. I yeah. mean, it could be the yeah. simplest thing that it triggers that um, a personal uh, connection mm -hmm. rather than just some formal connection. Yeah, for sure. So that's cool. How else can people utilize copy? Like when you look at your business and you have your websites, you have, you know, now social media and all, like, list a few things that just about every business owner, every entrepreneur can look at and be like, hey, this is actually an opportunity to yeah. think about some copy yeah. that's more well thought out than just, you know, just writing. Stuff. Sure. Yeah, like one thing, again, this, everybody has a website or needs a website, right? Uh, and so getting, I would say clarity is the first mm -hmm. thing. Like that's step one of uh, copywriting is, um, well, first is really research, but once you've done that, if you're a business owner, you know, the research is done. Yeah. You've put, you know, I don't need to, you don't need to get a Wikipedia to f tell me anything about how to make great videos. Yeah. It's your life, it's your business. Yeah. Um, and then it's about clarity. Like, how do you explain what it is you have to people in a way that makes them instantly get it? Mm. Maybe you use an analogy or metaphor or, or something um, and they, you know, I like to think of it mirror as like a log line when, when you go to Netflix mm -hmm. and you read the descriptions of, yeah. of the shows or the movies and you go, okay, that seems interesting yeah. or no, nah, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. It's similar to One that. sentence or two sentences. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like just explain to me what this is that you do and yeah. what you care about. We have a thing, one, I love creating these little formulas. Mm -hmm. my, my, my specialty is I trick uh, people who are scared of having to write copy. I tricked them into writing copy uh, just by filling in the blanks. Yeah. And then they go, oh my God, that's copy. So <laughs> one of the formulas we use is called, I call it the rubble yell. Okay. Uh, because it's a, just a two sentence thing. And every business owner, every entrepreneur is born, basically born of rebellion, mm -hmm. right? It's, I was tired of this or I needed, I knew there needed to be a better way. Yeah. Uh, and so it goes like this. It's a, you know, um, I love blank, um, but was fed up with blank, and so I created blank nice. that helps blank do blank. Wow. And it's, it's that super simple, but you have yeah. the words in there like um, love is a mm. passionate word, right? Yeah. Or you could even, if love's too strong for you, you could say I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about. 
but I was fed up with or frustrated or sick of, mm -hmm. those are two passionate ideas. Yeah. And when you frame it in emotion like that, people really sit up and resonate with it. Yeah, that's really cool. So uh, you were gonna share with us a formula, what was it? A a 60, 60 second, second sales, sales, sales letter, yeah. yeah. So do you wanna dive right into it? Sure. Yeah, so I created this. Uh, this is the culmination of my life's work. <laughs> <laughs> All in four parts. That's cool. uh, because it's a joke formula that I took mm -hmm. from my stand-up days. You know, when I was a stand-up comic, uh, you have a, a you, you work with a different comic typically every week, and I would sit in the back of the room and watch them. And I was uh, always very interested in how they opened their set. Because yeah. think about that proposition. Here's this group of strangers who have assembled in a, a dark room together. Um, to basically form a, a single personality. Mm -hmm. And the comedian walks on stage and has a conversation with that, that person, essentially. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's instant, instant uh, chemistry, yeah. and other times it's awkward, and sometimes it never gets off the ground, and that's what you call <laughs> dying on stage. Uh. And um, so I was really obsessed with how does this stranger walk in mm -hmm. front of this other stranger and... Um, sometimes instantaneously have mm -hmm. them doubled over with laughter. Like, that's yeah. amazing, right? Um, and so uh, I, I, I figured out that there was a bit of a formula to that opening joke that I call the persona joke formula. And it's a, so there's four parts to it, and I'll teach you that. But then the other part of it is uh, when I became a copywriter, I said, well, how do we take that same proposition? Yeah. Because if somebody comes to your website uh, cold, as we call it, they don't yeah. know anything yeah. about you. Um, uh, it's the same thing, except it, you, it's digital. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, who are you and why should I care? And yeah. are you, are you going to win me over? Good luck. The, yeah. the, the, the clock starts now, right? <laughs> and so um, in, in comedy, the persona joke formula goes like this. It's identity, struggle, discovery, surprise. Mm -hmm because the surprise is what gets the laugh. It's the mm -hmm. thing you didn't see coming or I never thought of it that way. Um, so uh, one of my favorites is from a woman named uh, Karen Rontowski. And the, the best place to see a persona joke formula is on a, uh, a late night TV show, mm -hmm. especially if it's their first appearance, because yeah. your number one job is to establish your persona. Yeah. So she, her, on her first Letterman appearance, she, uh, she walked out and said, <clears throat> um, my kids were so bad in Walmart today that I pulled a fly swatter off the shelf and I smacked them with it. And she said, uh, and as soon as the fly swatter hit their butt, I realized, I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a great job because instantly we know so much about yeah, her, right? Yeah. So identity is what you think is a, a, a mother in Walmart with mm -hmm. the kids that are being crazy. Now, the struggle is that the kids are being crazy. Mm -hmm. The discovery is the fly swatter. Yeah. And the surprise is they're not even her kids. <laughs> yeah. She's just beating random children. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And so uh, in now as a business owner, surprise is uh, not something we're looking to do. We're not mm -hmm. looking to trick our audience into laughing. We're yeah. looking to um, compel them into believing that we're somebody who can help them. Mm -hmm. So if we share that same journey but instead change surprise to result, mm. then it becomes very powerful. So That's identity, cool. struggle, discovery, result. So for the 60 second sales hook, my 60 second sales hook is, I'd say, hey, I'm Kevin Rogers. I spent years uh, traveling the country as a dead broke stand-up comedian until I discovered how uh, an, a joke formula could be turned into a sales hook formula and called the 60 second sales hook and began teaching copywriters and business owners how to use it in their business to explode their sales. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, I've become one of the most in-demand sales consultants online, making more money in a month uh, as a copywriter than I used to make in a whole year as a comic. So if you'd like to discover how you can use the 60 second sales hook in your marketing, simply enter your email in the box below and I'll give it to you for free on the next page. That's cool. That's it. Yeah. But it's the same formula, yeah. right? Identity. And for my, for my struggle, usually we go a little bit more into the struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is dead broke stand-up comedian because yeah. dead broke is kind of all you need to say. Sure. Nobody wants that. Yeah. Um, and, and the discovery is the, the important part. It's, it, it has to be 
sort of proprietary enough mm -hmm. that people go, wow, that's interesting, but it seems like only that person could have invented this. Yeah. So for me, I have the advantage of being both a comedian and a copywriter, mm -hmm. so I'm uniquely qualified to invent something like this. Yeah. Um, but if you use that formula and just sort of do enough research and think about your story, like you said, everybody comes to this from some interesting side yeah. door. There's no one path into this entrepreneurial right. world. So what we do is help people identify the parts of their story and put them together through this formula. Once you've identified the parts, it's pretty much uh, fill in the blank easy. Yeah. Do you, speaking of filling in the blank, do you have anything we can share with uh, the viewers that would be kind of like in a written format, yeah. maybe the formula itself with the blanks and stuff like that? Absolutely. You can either, is there a place for them to go already or can yeah. they just post something on their video? Sure. Yeah, well, they can go to 60secondsaleshook.com. Oh, you got a whole thing for that. Yeah, cool. and awesome. uh, the book, it's also available on, on Amazon if you really love hard copy, but mm -hmm. I suggest going to 60secondsaleshook.com yeah. and I'll give you the uh, PDF of the book for free. Cool. And it's only 52 pages, what I call a one-sit read. Yeah. You'll be through it in like 25 minutes and you'll know exactly how to use this uh, and the entire formula for it is on page 52 of the book. And even uh, as you download the book, there, we have a three-part training, a video nice. training, which you'll appreciate. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, on the page right there, so. That's awesome. I, I love so 60 it. second sales hook? Yep. Dot com? That's it. Perfect, so we'll post the link underneath it. Yeah, thanks for sharing that because that's definitely an actionable thing which we like uh, to share on the show. My pleasure. So now uh, let's talk about some other ways people can uh, connect with you. You host podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, you do live events. Like let's talk about a little bit more about uh, more involvement for people that really, well, so there's two things, right? Mm -hmm. So hiring a copywriter, let's right. talk about it a little bit sure. because I don't know if you have a good advice on what to look for in a copywriter. Yeah. And secondly, if somebody actually is into copywriting and want to do it on their own type okay. thing, yeah. and it's looking for some training, guidance, whatever, where they can go to find out more or get involved yeah, to, to sure. train themselves on that. Yeah, so that's what I, I sort of left um, uh, my freelance career, mm -hmm. I transitioned slowly uh, into a full-time business now called copychief.com. Gotcha. And we basically, basically do the both things you mentioned there, conveniently, because I know you don't know that. But uh, basically, that's what it's become, mm -hmm. because that is the, the need. It's like, how do I write this better myself? Because yeah. I always believe every business owner should be their own best copywriter, because yeah. they are. Uh, but they either don't have time or don't feel confident enough to write it themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still think that they should know enough uh, about copy to be able to recognize good copy from bad copy, because yeah. the differences can be subtle. Um, and so let me just like, sorry yeah. to pause you in there, yeah. but I think that's a really, really deep advice that everybody should try, like think about it. You don't need to go learn about copywriting to be a copywriter. Right. The, uh, the biggest benefit of learning something about copywriting could be, so when you hire somebody, right. you can see if it's good or bad. 100%. You can kind of uh inspect what do you expect type thing absolutely so i didn't want to just brush over it because i know yeah that is that you're right it's so. really critical it's like you know invest in a course with that intention and say okay i'm, I'm gonna just watch these videos mm -hmm. and when one or two things will happen number one is you might discover i'm actually better at this than i thought i would be yeah. and it's it's sort of fun i've had a lot of business owners decide to become copywriters yeah. for that exact reason they just became obsessed with it um and enjoyed it uh, but it, it, at the minimum, you'll be able to be able to identify, is this good or not? Because mm -hmm. on the surface, it can all look kind of the same. And, yeah. you, and if you have to go, all right, I trust you. I hope it's, uh, it seems good enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it can backfire <laughs> in really <laughs> bad ways. So I would say invest enough in the education, like you said, Mira, to be able to identify, yeah. is this something I want to send out? Another big part of it is voice. Mm -hmm. um, you're hiring a copywriter to help be the voice of your brand, represent your voice. Sure. And uh, when you know a little bit about how to uh, get your voice across through copy, you know, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. We call it making the turn. It's mm -hmm. easy for a business owner to go on camera and just give great value in good content. Mm -hmm. But at some point you have to make the turn and become a salesperson and say, yeah. now I'd like you to give me money. Yeah. because I, yeah. I can do great things for you. And that's very uncomfortable for a lot of business owners, yeah. ironically. 
And so um, making sure that the, you work with a copywriter who can nail your voice and make those sort of transitions seamless in yeah. a way that even uh, better than you could yourself because you don't have all the hang-ups of it for being sure. you. And let's just address this whole asking for money thing because it's just one of my pet peeves. Uh, if you have something that's awesome and you believe it can help yeah. the person, why would you be stuck on asking them for money? It's kind of like, you know, it's a mindset thing, obviously. So if mm -hmm. you are still stuck at, you know, I, I can provide value, but oh my God, I'm gonna have to ask yeah. for money. Right. Just get over it. Like, I think it was Zig Ziglar uh, saying, when you're nervous, get in service. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that totally applies here. When you're nervous about selling your own stuff or asking yeah. people for money, just imagine what would happen if you don't ask them for money and they don't pay you and don't use your services. So yeah. if you really believe in your stuff that much, right. you're not doing them any service. You do, you're doing a really big disservice by not you know, asking for money. Yeah. And typically most people are asking for way too little to begin with. Exactly. And that's like the biggest growth opportunities with most people I yeah. talk to is to raise their prices. So yeah, just as a, you know, kind of a side Little note rant. to what you said. No, it's a, it's a valid rant. And yeah. I'll, I'll even add to that and say, one thing is I think, look, charging too little is better than not doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So once you, if you have to charge too little to feel comfortable with it, fine, you can say higher numbers. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing is think about how much it would cost them uh, to go with somebody bad. Mm. So think of it, if, if, if you'd rather be in service to somebody than feel like you're taking money from them, yeah. just imagine that they're going to pay somebody to do what you're proposing, yeah. and they're probably gonna pay somebody else more and get bad service. So, yeah. you know, fight for that, if nothing yeah, else. For sure. That, yeah, that's a, that's a great advice, for sure. And the last thing I wanna add to this one is the perceived value. If you are, if you have a choice between somebody that does something for a hundred bucks or a thousand dollars, you automatically think that a thousand dollar person is better, and they might not be. That's but right. that's just kind of the, the assumption. Exactly right. And to tie it back into your copy, if you do charge more money and you are not the cheapest one, so you actually have to compete on other levels than pricing, then that's where I think the persuasive copy comes in play even mm -hmm. more than the normal because you have to really win them over and make them believe that the pricing is uh, adequate for the value they're gonna right. receive and all that stuff, right? So the, the higher price services or products you have, you probably would wanna have a great copywriter on your team yes. to deliver those messages. Exactly, and sale, Beca right? because it's the copywriter's <laughs> job to uh, fill out all those parts of, of the proposition, mm -hmm. of, of the sales argument. And one of them, I have another formula called the four by six where it breaks down every section and one of them is value, yeah. and where you have to say, okay, uh, what we're talking about, what would this cost you to do in, a, in another way? Mm -hmm. So a simple example of that is to say you're a, a trainer, um, uh, or, or you're, you're a virtual trainer, and you have a series of workout videos, yeah. right? Yeah. You can say part of the value is, uh, I can say, you, you, just to join a gym and pay a trainer anywhere from 50 to $100 a session, mm -hmm. This is only $97, so just one session with a trainer, and I've got you covered for eight weeks to meet your yeah. goal, that kind of thing, That's right? That's really cool. And then if you sort of break it down logically, it takes, it's not just, people get nervous when, they, when they're not sure of the value. Mm -hmm. With Like you said, right. if you're sure of it and you've done the math, mm -hmm. then you can confidently, you know, sell it to them. Yeah, for sure. So that's really cool. Uh, and I, I got like more stuff on copywriting, but I'm like, now that you're actually talking, mm -hmm. you know, like this whole apples to apples comparison versus apples to oranges. So people can't really compare your prices yeah. to a competition because it's not the same stuff. Right. So copywriters can do some magic, like it's really cool. And I have an experience too. So I want to now segue into hiring a copywriter, what to look yeah. for and some of the some of the mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you can definitely clarify this for us. I one time I did hire a copywriter to write a multi paid sales letter. And I'm not good with like emailing back and forth or answering questions via email. And this guy was had this process where he just called me, we talked for 45 minutes, he recorded it, then yeah. he listened to that a few times yeah. and delivered like nine page sales letter that was like 90% there. Great. And we went back and forth a couple of times to yeah. tighten it up. But for me, that was a beautiful process. Yeah. So I don't know if there's different processes for different people or just kind of a, yeah. what, what is the, That's, you know, what is the right 
thing to look for so you don't get burned in this process? That's a really, yeah, great example and great question. I would say, uh, uh, let me just unpack some of the things that happened in that mm -hmm. situation for you. What made that go well? The, the copywriter had the intention of asking you directly mm -hmm. uh, what he, he, was it he? Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. assume. Uh, a lot of great female copywriters um, uh, needed to know mm -hmm. to, so number one, he was sold so that he could write yeah. the copy, yeah. right? Number two, that it was in your words. So recording that conversation, mm -hmm. he probably transcribed it. Um, you know, was, that's really where the, like I said before, it, it's in our heads already, mm -hmm. but we get stuck on how to say it. Yeah. A great copywriter will come in and ask you the right questions and take that information and turn it into, you know, the proper sales mm -hmm. argument. Um, so look for a copywriter who is super curious, uh, does want to have those kinds of calls with you, and be available to the copywriter. D you know, one of the things is like, it's not just like, okay, you pay the fee and give them access to your product or something and mm -hmm. they're going to go work their magic. It's a relationship, yeah. uh, very much a relationship be like it was for you. Um, and you, you know, you want them to be super curious, have a lot of questions. Yeah. So prepare to treat it like any other relationship where you have to give energy to it, mm -hmm. and chances are you'll get a good you'll get a good product. That's really cool. Uh, you mentioned the relationship. So going into a project or going through the um, hiring process of the copywriter, you probably should be looking at a long term thing, right? Because in the first project, they're gonna learn about your business right. more, yeah. and then it must be probably easier and easier moving forward to do other pieces. That's correct. Once they go through the first thing, right? Yeah, I mean, I, if somebody's um, really serious about bringing a, a copywriter into their company, mm -hmm. sort of on a retainer, mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis, I always tell them that you try to work with a few. You don't. Yeah. Because what happens if you say, I just want to meet one person, have them do a, a first project, and then I'm hoping that we get married after that. Yeah. The problem is that you'll start to accept little things that might mm -hmm. not be optimal just because you don't want to go through this process again. Sure, sure. A better way to do it is to set up a smaller test project mm -hmm. and talk to, say, let's just say you talk to seven copywriters. You choose the three that you all think have great potential of being this permanent person for you. You put all three of them through a test project. It could be a $500, $1,000 project, something valuable. Yeah. It's worth having three versions of it to yeah, test, that yeah. kind of thing. And through that process, you'll know the one. Uh, and you learn so much through a smaller mm. project like that, that now you can move on and say, hey, how do we do something uh, more permanent together? Yeah, that's actually really cool advice. So I think you know, I wouldn't be hung up on the paying three times for the same thing. And I do it in small version with um, like Fiverr.com and we do some voiceovers, right? right? I don't really have time to go back and forth. So I pay three people mm -hmm. and then I, one of them is usually good. So, yeah. you know, that speeds, that's just paying for speed yeah. because I don't have to go through this for a week. And I think that's a, that's a phenomenal. So what kind of projects could you advise people to give these copywriters during this hiring process? What would be kind of like a simple, mm -hmm. something that would tell them if the voice is good and if you know everything is on the up and up, mm -hmm. but so it's not a 12 page sales letter for some yeah. big project. Right, know? I'd say two things. One is uh, what we call a landing page. Mm -hmm. So a short, uh, maybe an opt-in offer, a, a classic one is what we call free, free plus shipping book. So you might have a Facebook ad that leads to a landing page that offers like a seven ninety five. Hey, let me like I I could do this with the sixty second sales. Like I'd yeah. say for seven ninety five, I'll send you the book. I'll, we'll cover the it's free, but we'll just cover the shipping, and uh, that's a page for about a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, an experienced copywriter could yeah. come in and do a really good job on that page, or an advertorial, which is more like an article that's there to help warm up before they get to the next page, yeah. which is the sales page. Um, or an email, a short email series, three to five oh, yeah, emails. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, because in all those instances, they need to do a, a good bit of research about mm -hmm. you. You'll have that conversation so they can learn about yeah. you and get what they need. They'll go through your product a bit and you'll get a good sense of how professional they are, how well they get you, how well you resonate with them. Um, those kinds of projects are perfect okay. test projects. Yeah, I love the email sequence. That would be kind yeah. of cool. 
So one more thing I want to cover for the copywriting thing, um, pricing. And I know that this is going to be very open-ended probably, and it's yeah. totally going to depend on if you're hiring John Carlton versus yeah. some guy that came out of college yesterday. Right. But when you know people are getting proposals and stuff like that, is there any type of rule of thumb to see if you are you know, paying too much or too little in the front end yeah. before you, I mean, again, Let's let's take the cheapest one out of the equation okay. and the most expensive one out of the equation. Okay. And what would be kind of the average copywriter that you could even imagine having on your team full time? Mm -hmm. You know, so give me some sort of range or at least something that would be a red flag when okay. somebody starts sending you a proposal. I'll do my best. It's a. <laughs> I, I totally know what I was getting an, into with this there, question. Yeah. yeah but, I, I, <laughs> believe me, I, I wish I could answer it better. It would yeah. help everybody do better sure, work. Sure. Um, but for the sake of just having some idea. I would say, let's just say we're talking about a, a sales letter, mm -hmm. which would be, this is the crux of your sales argument. So everything else you do, the emails, the Facebook ads, uh, an advertorial, um, are going to lead to a sales letter where the proposition is probably going to be um, equivalent to a thousand to up to five thousand uh, dollar proposition, mm -hmm. right? Um, for a sales letter like that, it's probably going to be um, you know, five to 10 pages or more. And also it needs to be, uh, easily turned into a VSL video sales yep, letter yep. script. Um, and so, uh, an experienced copywriter to write that page for you, I would say you would want to be paying between seven and $10,000. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, it's going to take them about a month of their life to really do the, the right research. Mm -hmm. And they have to be good and experienced to make sure they're giving you something that, they, they are very confident based on yeah. their history is going to convert. Now, the relationship comes in even then where um, you, you're going to want them to stick with you through the testing phase sure. because things like headlines and uh, hooks and uh, even some of the email series leading up to that might need to be tweaked mm -hmm. to optimize you know, that sale. On the, on, the, on the low end, for a newer copywriter, it could be as low as $2,500 for that yeah. same page. Um, there's a great situation that I call, and on the crazy high end, let's say um, twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah, if, a piece of a business. Uh, <laughs> well, I, when you get into royalties, like, yeah. I was fifty to to write a a, a full launch sequence, mm -hmm. uh, fifty thousand dollars, and it was a no-brainer to the people who were yeah. had a bunch of partners promoting the sure. thing, and it was going to be a multi-million multi dollar deal. launch. Yeah, right. uh, but believe me, to, to say the word fifty thousand dollars to somebody without freaking yeah. out for me as a former artist i never thought i would say that yeah. that, that, no, that for number. you that's awesome that you got to that level yeah but it was a lot of work too yeah. it was certainly earned but um i know that might be mind-blowing if you're just sitting there so uh, there's this little scale i like to share with business owners that i think is helpful if you want to bring in a copyright i think the sweet spot to to get start a relationship with a copywriter is somebody who's figured out uh how to get some clients so they've got some experience uh, and they have a pretty good idea what works and what doesn't. So they can bring some value uh, from a marketing perspective into the equation, right? Um, uh, but yet, they're, oftentimes when you're starting out, you're, you're at this frustrating point as a copywriter where you're not, everything's a one night stand, mm -hmm. and you're not learning the results of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to bring a copywriter into your business and you're willing to nurture that relationship and share with them the results of, of how their copy is working, mm -hmm. then that is super valuable to them. And uh, they, I teach copywriters to factor that value of them getting that experience and having shareable results into the equation. Yeah. Um, so if you're willing to put more effort into the relationship, it should cost you less if you uh, want to trust the copywriter, barely be involved like you did, have mm -hmm. one conversation and say, go create magic, obviously yeah, that's going to cost yeah, yeah. you closer to that $20,000 number. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, you mentioned something that was really, I think, powerful. The, usually the very first version of anything, whether it's a video, copy, whatever, I think it's just a starting point yeah. that you then try to tweak over time. Right. So maybe having a two or three months relationship with that copywriter yes. to do some additional tweaking, oh, changing yes. headlines, doing whatever. Yes. 
it's probably a good idea to bundle it into the relationship, not just... Uh, Please, yeah, like right? the, the biggest mistake um, people can avoid is hiring a copywriter, you know, two weeks before you're actually going live, yeah. going, oh, we should get a copywriter. <laughs> it should be two months, three months uh, minimum, because like you said, they, they need time to do the research, to understand mm -hmm. you, and you should do uh, a, an internal launch before you do a big launch if mm -hmm. you're rolling out a product. So uh, Ryan Levesque, who I know you know from the Ask Method, mm -hmm. um, does a brilliant thing where he has his big launch, partner launch in July, but he uh, tests all the copy, the whole sales process in March, just to his own list yeah. uh, before that. And he, and he knows with full confidence going into July that he's inviting people into a, uh, to promote a sales funnel that's gonna convert. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, Let's talk about your live events. So what is the URL for people if they actually want to go experience you in a live environment, actually teaching, copywriting, just to check it out? And that, to me, could be like one of the quickest way to probably learn mm -hmm. something is be in the room for three days with you and just yeah. absorb it and then decide if they want to hire somebody, if they want to yeah. become one or whatever. Um, and you do those events annually. Yep. Right? Yeah, that's so right. is there a URL people sure. can check it out and get yeah. more info about it? Uh, copychief.live. Live, okay. uh, or copychieflive.com, either one will get you there. Okay. And you're right, that's a really smart way to do it. If you're still going, what is this copy thing even about? Mm -hmm. um, come to the event, you'll learn for two days of content from me and other great speakers in the industry. Plus, the best writers I know and work with will be at that event attending, and we set up meetups. Mm -hmm. Really casual way to every, for everybody to get to meet each other. Yeah. You could ask questions to the writers and uh, kind of tell them what you're up to. A great way to fast track getting a copywriter into your business. That's really cool. Awesome. So let's segue into mm, back to your success story. What I mean, all the years of building businesses and traveling and starting mm -hmm. basically from nothing. Uh, Somebody is watching this uh, show just starting out, maybe open minded enough to learn from other people's mistakes. Uh, what are kind of some of your keys to your success? Yeah, well, you have to be willing to make mistakes. That's cool. Um, it is critical. Like, it, just realize it takes a lot of the anxiety out of launching something or putting mm -hmm. something out there to say, hey, this is a test. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Other people have told me it's a good idea. But the only judge and jury is the, is the buying public. So um, I would not wait to get something perfect. We both yeah. know stories of people who have been working on something for yeah. two years and you know, they could be on their fifth uh, iteration of it and, it and have it sort of perfected by then if they just yeah. be willing, willing to put it out there. So you know, fail fast, as Gary Halbert yeah. used to say, yeah. uh, and, and just look at it. N none of it's gonna ruin your life or your mm -hmm. career, you know? Yeah, so that's a big one. I think people beat themselves up over mistakes or you know the failing failures whatever and i think if you can just leave it in the past move on to the next one next one understand that it's going to happen that's part of the yeah. process you don't get through the depression you know uh depression cycles i guess when, <laughs> you know you're crying right. for a month because something failed right. whatever just expect it and you do it more and more something is gonna succeed and then you know one big success can make up for 10 Right. And it's not like you have to come up with a whole new idea every time. Mm -hmm. You will learn so much from the first failure that it might just be a, two things that you need to fix for the second edition mm -hmm. of it that make it all click. And then you just keep improving from there. Like, yeah. you know, if, if you're getting into business hoping that everything just keep goes well and keeps going well, it's a fantasy that's that can never happen. It'd be like a, uh, a major league baseball player saying, I'm, I'm literally going to bat a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go to the plate this year, I'm gonna get a hit. It's just it's not realistic. Like batting 300 is amazing, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, that's what failing seven out of ten times and yeah. Right. Still be cool. Uh, anything else? Any other tips for people that are watching this? No, I think um, you know have a as much as possible. I think mentors and having mentors, a, yeah. a a supportive network of people yeah. that you can talk to, confide in, uh, be transparent with. And I've always had mentors in my business where uh, I, I found that different people are uniquely qualified to help you solve different problems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my model for success has been uh, fail fast, uh, you know, uh, iterate, create good problems 
and then find the person who's uniquely qualified to help you solve that problem. Yeah. And then that's how you kind of keep moving up the ladder. Yeah, I love it. Having the mentor part is so important because, I mean, there's people that have done it before you. Like, there's nothing new. And, well, that's how, uh, you, that's how you fail a lot less, yeah, is, is yeah. have them go, that's a terrible idea. I know it yeah. sounds good, but I tried that and it does yeah, not work. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, you already mentioned uh, all your copywriting influencers. Any, anybody else for the other parts of your life and business that, uh, oh, yeah. that you would recommend to look into? Yeah, a lot. Uh, certainly, you know, some of the great, when, when I was transitioning from my job into my freelance career, uh, Jim Rohn, I oh, used yeah. to listen to nonstop. Sure. Um, Zig Ziglar too, uh, Earl Nightingale's stuff, which starts to feel a little archaic, mm -hmm. especially these days when uh, equality is something that is much more yeah. prevalent, thankfully. But um, um, my favorite book recently is called Never Split the Difference mm. by Chris Voss. Are you familiar with it? Not yet, no. He, he's, it's, be, so. it's about negotiating. Okay. It's called, the subtitle is Negotiate, Negotiating as if your life depends on it. Oh, that's cool. Because he is a former FBI hostage negotiator. Oh, wow. All right. So high stake stuff and he gives like some really cool tips about how to negotiate better. That's really cool. I'll, we'll put it in the resources too and um, yeah, actually read or listen on Audible out of, to a lot That's of the books I, that we mentioned. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think I got actually a few credits now I have to use up. So I'm going to go there get it go. right You'll after we're one. done. Um, what is your uh, definition of success? Your personal, not just the broad one for everybody, but uh, in your mind's eye, if you see or if whatever you're living now already, if that's the case. But, you know, it's, it's so individual to yeah. every person. So you personally, what, uh, what do you consider? Um, success? Probably linen napkins. Yeah. If I'm more often than not have a linen napkin on my... Uh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I knew there's going to be That's... a joke somewhere in there. In the <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. It I used to practice really cool. going to nicer restaurants yeah. before I could afford them. And I would say, because I was like, I, I, I want to be able to show up in a scenario where I'm in a place yeah. this nice and I don't... I'm not like pulling on my collar because I've uh -huh. never worn a jacket before. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would literally uh, save up and go, I'm going to have a nice meal this month just so I can feel like I belong here, you That's know? Cool. So I think like train yourself to push out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and do things like that. But honestly, success to me, look, we could all get philosophical mm -hmm. about it, but having enough money and resource to do the things that you want to do without having mm -hmm. to check the bank account first to me is is a big sign of success. You know, my family, uh, we don't need to live in a, a, a giant house or anything. Mm -hmm. We love to travel and we love to go to, we love music. Yeah. And cool. just last week, uh, I saw a show come up at Janice Landing in mm -hmm. St. Pete that I knew my daughter loved this band. Without yeah. thinking twice, I bought four tickets. Wow. And last night we just went and she had the time of her life. To me, that's cool. being able to do things like that without thinking about it mm -hmm. is, is the, that's one of the fruits of success. For That's sure. really awesome. Yeah, I've heard people going to test drive a sports car or go check out a model mansion or whatever. Never heard anybody testing out the restaurants before. So that's pretty. <laughs> Learn these good pretty food. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, what's your big why? Why do you do what you do? I mean, you do so many different things and helping a lot of people. But what gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm blessed to have uh, built a business now where I, I get to truly help people. Uh, and it's just so happens it's people who are exactly where I was only, you know, a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, what it's like. And so my big why is getting sort of those love letters from people. And sometimes people mm -hmm. I've never even met or have not paid me a dime. They just listen to the podcast mm -hmm. and they'll say, you know, look, I, uh, felt compelled to tell you that what I've learned from you uh, has helped me overcome this big hurdle or, or fulfill a, a dream. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, that gets addicting, doesn't yeah. it? When, when, yeah. when you start to hear that from people mm -hmm. uh, watching shows like this and say that, you know, so just, man, like it's never been a better time to be in this business because yeah. we get to, um, be, be our own producers mm -hmm. of, of our ideas and put yeah. it out to the world and have it resonate with complete strangers all over the world. Yeah. So to me, it's like uh, I feel the urgency every day to not waste the day because mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity for helping people. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, thank you so much for sharing all the wisdom with us and the knowledge. All the resources will be under the video. So 
connect with Kevin if you are interested in learning more about copywriting and um, uh, look him up on YouTube uh, to check out some of his comedy, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some cool videos out there. And I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I will stress one more time the implementation part of it. Kevin and I had blast over here before the show, during the show. It was fun, but if you watched it and do absolutely nothing with the information that we've shared with you, then uh, you know you just wasted a bunch of your time. So remember, the uh, implementation is the difference between success and failure. Until next time, wake up and be successful.